Um, can you explain me a bit more of your life in, in File de Terra before you came? Uh, my life in, Port in Portugal, I, I left there, I was 14 years old. I was a little troublemaker. We were poor. Up to 14 years old, I had no shoes. Walking my bare feet was tough. When, you, when, you, when you're small, young, it's tough. I started working at 10 years old. Uh, and everybody wanted me. I worked like uh, I was getting paid while, while the school didn't do that kind of money, and the men were getting 20. I was making almost as a man at 10 years old. Finished school at 10, started working at 10. My family came here in hopes for a better life, but dealt with a lot of hatred, especially now. Before we begin, I wanted to ask you if you have any stories of possible discouragement that you dealt with, you know, being a Portuguese English immigrant. Well, I mean, growing up, uh, when I was a young girl your age, um, the referendum was a big issue. I used to work as a cosmetician, and um, and I remember there was this, um, you know, this old lady um, that, because I spoke perfect French, I guess she assumed I was French, and one time I remember um, this, uh, this immigrant family came into the pharmacy. And she was in the photo counter and I was like just taking her order and she stopped and she looked back and then she looked at me and she said like this, Toi, tu les aimes tu les immigrés? I believe one of Quebec's biggest problems is our use for the word immigrant and what is associated with it. But after that, like I, you know, I grew up. I had you guys, you know, I had your brother, I had you, and I had your know, little brother. And things seemed to have sm smoothed down, but uh, um, it, it just, I went through so many years thinking this was over. You know, we went through decades of, you know, the whole province voting liberal and saying, you know, oh, enough is enough with the referendum. We don't want to hear any referendum talks anymore. Um, and, you know, slowly, you know, like especially in Montreal, things were coming back. Like the English language was slowly coming. Not, there was no animosity. Um, you know, people could say, bonjour, hi. When I worked at Starbucks, and this is how it is now, you're not allowed to speak English first. So instead of saying bonjour, hi, you just have to say bonjour. And then if they speak to you in English, then you're allowed to speak to them. But there's a big thing because a lot of people, whether it's in hospitals and restaurants and anywhere, they're not getting served by people because they speak a different language that's not French Quebec. I work for Provigo for 42 years. Customer comes in, if he's French, I say good morning. If the customer is English, I answer in English. I mean, French, it's, I speak fr I fr I say French. If he's English, I answer him in English. If he's Italian, I answer in Italian. If he's Portuguese, I ask him in Portuguese. Government is full of shit. Who pays me? It's the customers. Unlike my grandfather, a lot of immigrants come here later on in life and it makes it a lot harder for them to learn French. My grandmother was one of them. Uh, you know, my mother managed to learn um, and she moved there in her 40s. But I remember her French was very, very limited. And I remember her saying, you know, she would say, instead of saying merci beaucoup, she would say merci beaucoup. And I never noticed that, never, because I grew up, you know, with my mom, so I never noticed that. And it was your father that said, you know, he was cracked up one day, and I was like, what's your problem? And he goes, do you realize, you know, what your mom's saying? I said, no. And then he, like, pointed it out. But she actually made an effort to learn. But was she accepted for the limited French that she spoke? 
I don't think so. I come from a very small country, a very small village. People, they speak Spanish, they speak Portuguese, they speak English, they speak French, and German. You go to any restaurant in Azores, they all speak those languages. You ask them, and in German, they're going to give you food in German. If you ask them in Portuguese, they give you Portuguese, or English, or French. Here, a big country like this, you want to speak one language. It doesn't make sense. I think the thing that a lot of us don't realize is that this land doesn't even belong to us. And for some French Quebecers to call some people immigrants is absurd. This land, it's the natives. It's quite simple, basically. If you've taken a course of history, and ironically, I learned this in here, in Quebec, um, in my own co uh, classes, I think, uh, in high school. I believe it's been a while I haven't gone to school. Um, but the reality is, the first people, the very, very, very first people that lived here are the natives. Everyone else are immigrants. This is what I've been for 60 years. Then I lived only 14, I'm 60 here. It's my country, it's my, uh, my country. But they still call you an immigrant? I don't give a shit what they call me, but uh, uh, it's, it's where I live. So I'm more immigrant than some Quebecers. Some people younger than me, I'm older than them, so I'm more Quebecer than he is. So Quebec, in reality, belongs to the natives. They are the true people of Quebec, not the French Quebecers, not the Parisians, not the British. None of us are. All of us are immigrants.